Yes. Okay, so then we, we move to the third section, which is actually on how to develop video case studies. Um, so although perhaps you are not uh, keenly interested in developing this yourself, uh, we do want to enter a little bit into how this works, uh, given that we think that there is, let's say, an easy entry uh, uh, process that you could actually use. Huh? So it's not beyond the, the realm of what you could uh, try to envision yourself. So what is the video case development process about? Uh, so uh, uh, basically, you have three, perhaps four steps in this uh, video case development process. So the first step is pre-production. Um, this is identifying topics and problems that you want to focus on and finding relevant companies and uh, writing a script. I'll come back to that uh, in a minute, of course. Then you have the production, which is actually the video case shooting um, um, in and of itself. And then you have the post-production, which is the development of the video case, right? So the taping of the, the video interview is the production and the making of the video case is actually done in editing process in post-production. Uh, this process is done, of course, let's say in co-creation uh, with uh, companies and lectures, but also with students and, of course, uh, peers or, or lecture or uh, uh, other reviewers that uh, test the case and perhaps redirect a little bit uh, how it looks like and how the teaching note is developed uh, in the last uh, process. Okay, so finding a right company. Um, of course, I think that we all know some relevant companies, um, like uh, some of you already mentioned before, that you sometimes invite into your classroom. So, um, you know, uh, sometimes already interesting real life um, uh, companies, um, you know, uh, some good managers because they need to be good storytellers. Uh, some are good managers, but not good storytellers. Also, they should not be camera shy. Uh, I've had, you know, uh, people that are very good at uh, telling a story when you take them out to lunch. Uh, but if you get them before a camera, then, uh, you know, they, they, they bring in details which are not of interest. Uh, sometimes they skip over important aspects. So it's not something which is that easy, right? So um, they need to be uh, interesting problems and also perhaps also failures huh? because we often focus on success. Um, but they need to be open and uh, candid about um, uh, sharing some of the problems and, and some of the mistakes that they made. Because you know, to be honest, if there is anything which is uh, common uh, when you talk to companies is that they all make mistakes, right? I mean, we're all amazed at how this is sometimes done um, and how they still bring it together afterwards uh, if they're uh, lucky. Uh, and of course, it does take uh, some time and effort, although I do think that for companies, it's not that much. Um, uh, for a CEO, you know, giving an interview, an intake interview, and and the the some some reading and some interview, uh, some videotaping is not more than than uh, you know half day, full day. So it's not all that much effort for them. It's of course much more effort for yourself uh, than for the companies uh, themselves. Again, if you have any questions, please interrupt. Uh, so just speak because I cannot see you right now. I can only see my own screen. So again, if there is anything which is not clear, please interrupt. Huh? Um, then, um, right, uh, the uh, pre-production writing and preparing the script, right? So how do you do this? Uh, well, once you've developed or, you know, uh, uh, chosen a, a case study um, or, or a company and the um, manager and the company agree on uh, moving it forward, you have to uh, write a script. Um, and this is done by doing an intake interview. Um, so you talk to the manager, um, um, interviewing if you like, which can be a regular face-to-face -face interview or it could be online, of course, if it's uh, still a pandemic. Um, and on the basis of that intake interview, you write a script. Um, so you tease out the sections and the, what they said to build a storyline because, you know, you don't want to um, um, uh, get the solution before the problem is, is posed. So uh, you want to develop some sort of problem solution based script in which you, uh, uh, which allows you to stop, like Andre already indicated, at uh, certain intersections where, stu uh, where uh, students in the end can, can come up with their own solutions, right? Um, so you develop this narrative in a co-creation pro uh, uh, project, if you like, 
between you and uh, the manager, but you are, of course, in the driving seat, given that you know what you want to accomplish in that video case. Uh, you know about the theory, you know about the framework. So it, it should be ultimately driven, I think, a little bit uh, by uh, the academic. What am I talking about? So this is, for instance, uh, an example, uh, uh, an excerpt, if you like, a, a snippet of one of the, the um, scripts I wrote, um, for instance, on Kipling, where you see, for instance, how did you revamp the international network? So they had started internationalizing, but it kind of failed. And so what did they do differently the second time round? Okay, so it's a little bit setting a background, if you like, of the company, which is sometimes important. Um, so you see the different sections which you want to um, uh, treat in that um, uh, uh, interview, in that uh, recording, and you put also uh, some B-roll, meaning some um, um, additional material next to it, which supports the story, because you know, there's nothing more boring, like <laughs> I'm sure you can attest to, but uh, at looking at um, uh, one guy <laughs> in, in particular and listening uh, to him speak all the time. So it's good if you have something to, to look at, uh, which supports uh, the storyline. So you need to also add some what is called B-roll, some, some supporting uh, additional uh, material. Um, so you can also overlay video material, but of course, uh, the, the original uh, voice or the dubbing voice of the manager needs to always be uh, heard, right? So this, the, the voice is always there, the video can, can alter a little bit. And we'll see, as I indicated already previously, you can, uh, we'll see an example of one of the um, sections of, of my video case. Okay, then we come to the, the second part, which is the recording of the video case, which is, uh, again, some sort of interview where you ask the scripted question to uh, the manager or the managers. Uh, in my case, there were always two, but in most cases, it's actually only one uh, manager. Um, and you go through that uh, those questions and you hope that the manager can follow the script and answer the different sections that you have highlighted. So this requires a little bit of, of um, sometimes repeating. Eh? It's not always um, uh, done in, in, in one take, if you like. Um, so they should follow the script, but not like an actress or, or an actor, right? So it's not as if they have to learn the lines by heart uh, because you want it to be uh, somewhat natural. So, you know, I have some text here, but I'm not following this, this text li literally. So you, you want uh, them to, to use their own uh, wording, okay? Now, what are the different options? And that's why I wanted to treat this uh, a little bit, uh, given that to show you that there is a possibility for you to do this yourself, okay? So um, we have done this, of course, um, by either a professional production crew, meaning, you know, I have a, 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 um, a professional uh, video uh, guy and a professional editor, uh, given that it's um, either done, um, for instance, by like, like Nuket, um, as, as an ad tech company um, um, commercially or through a project, of course. Um, but you could also use sometimes production teams and facilities found in universities. Uh, for instance, at the KU Leuven, we have a, a video department which can also do this for you. So it doesn't uh, cost you all that much either. Um, but uh, to be honest, you could also envisage envis doing this yourself. Okay, so you can either, for instance, record something which is happening in your classroom or you could use a 4k uh, vlogging camera to record uh, the interviews you have with with the manager yourself so um, it is not beyond the possibilities i just want to also uh, bring that um, uh, to bear okay um, so yeah the, they should not look into the camera they should look at you at all times even if you are looking at the script and trying to tease out if they are following it um, so it's not really um, you know uh, with, a, with an, um, um, an auto cue so they need to look at you rather than the camera okay and then you have what is called post-production making the final video case but because of course they will have gone off script they will have talked about other things uh, which perhaps are not relevant or perhaps are um, you know, ruining the, the, the storyline. They already uh, talked about the solution uh, while they should have talked um, about the problem only. So sometimes you need to edit um, uh, the, 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 the real footage, the real transcripts of the um, videotaped um, um, interview to make the, real, the, the final um, 
uh, script. So I think I have yeah some example here. So as you can see, right? So this is a transcript. Of course, it's in Dutch, but it doesn't matter what what is written there. Uh, so you have a script, and you know I only want to use this section. I want to delete uh, uh, different sections. Um, so that's how you actually make uh, a, a script um, using the interview that you uh, videotaped. And you put that then in the final, um, um, let's say, final script, final video case script with the uh, uh, exact B-roll attached to it. So the editor knows uh, what to do and how to do it. OK, uh, I think that that's about it. Yes, and then finally, of course, testing, reviewing, and writing the teaching notes. Um, you, can video, uh, you can test the video case on student audiences, like already Andrea talked about. Um, and you can still make small changes. Um, if you have a good video project file, you can, you know, there are uh, uh, cheap uh, programs, even free ones, although many universities have, have cheap official, um, for instance, Adobe products, Adobe Premiere, uh, which can be bought at, at really low cost, uh, not uh, uh, commercial uh, rates. Um, uh, so you can make small changes or ask uh, them to make small changes if you have a video department at your university. Uh, and so you can cater the teaching notes to that feedback, right? So you can uh, improve the way in which lectures can and should perhaps use uh, the video uh, case or how it was designed to, to be used. Okay, Andrea, I'm not sure if you want to add something uh, to this because I think that is my last slide. Yes. Yeah, I mean, um, I would actually ask the audience uh, what do they think, which kind which stage is the most challenging right so is it pre-production production post-production post or the review and testing what is most difficult a quiz i would say pre-production production pre-production pre i would pre say pre-production mm -hmm. yeah I really thought, you know, I mean, before, you know, see, seeing a case and getting into dialogues with, with, with people and talking about this, I thought that's, that, that's not too much effort. And I think the technological stuff, we could be getting done as well. We have uh, the, the media and the communication department in our faculty as well. But when I've seen the scripts that you did, and not even doing them, but, you know, convincing the, the manager to develop the, the co-creation part of the script. I mean, that seemed like a very tough part because you know, when I look into my contacts, I think I would convince them to, to do interviews with me and maybe even give them the questions before, but that they would sit down and say, this, this, this is what I'm gonna say. And this is what I, yeah, that looks like a real challenge. Good risk assessment, Dirk. Yes, actually, for, for us, we, we uh, first, uh, um, not to, to tell you honestly, we, we spend more time than expected. <laughs> That's number one. It's the same like with big database. So although you plan something and you give extra time, another portion of extra time is needed. And yes, for me, for example, that stage, even I, though I agree, I also prefer the version that, when, that the managers were spontaneous, but that shooting stage stage actually is always a surprise you know that's always a surprise although you do the co-creation although they do, they do script they do have script in advance but and you, it's always something new and a new discovery stage so it's uh, from that perspective it's very exciting process in, in in a way and with the shooting you get the material for the next case almost <laughs> so that's it but it's fine i mean you still have that that's why this po pro pro post production stage may be a little bit longer than initially planned however we we are learning and it's a learning process nuket is smiling because she has a, a series of cases already done uh, our list is shorter but yes you are more experienced with every case so even as a uh, as a producer as a lecturer you you get skilled how to ask how to make co creator focus to this to do to the and you you leave that room of maneuver narrow and narrow and you we, to to encourage you every next case goes faster than the the first one yes suzanne Yes, thank you. Uh, so I've, I've also done not Erasmus Plus, but in Sweden we have something called the Knowledge and Competence uh, Foundation, and they have a co-creation um, angle to all their projects. 
And uh, I also did one called Avance, which is related to education, where we developed a one year international business strategy most into a two year. And I'm thinking if one would uh, create a project like this, um, do you have any suggestions? Because I'm thinking like the managers, did they get any, get any compensation to participate in this or how did you get them to put all this time into it? Yeah, um, perhaps I, I'll first speak from my own experience and I'll give the floor to Nuket because she has a different business model uh, for her own uh, series of uh, video cases. Uh, but in our case, of course, um, you convince them because it's free of charge. I mean, uh, Nuket will, will elaborate that she actually gets the companies to pay for these video cases uh, because they, they do, yeah, they bring a global um, renown to, to, to their company, right? I mean, um, I'm making, for instance, for, for, for my small company, which is called IP, uh, more publicity than they can ever afford. I mean, uh, they don't have the, the marketing budgets <laughs> to, to make that type of uh, um, um, global scale um, uh, marketing campaign. So I convinced them in that respect. Um, and uh, of course, um, that's one, it, it's possible because it's, it's funded by a project, but perhaps Nukat can briefly explain the herd model uh, because um, it's not the only possibility. All right, uh, let me just very briefly uh, maybe mention how it all started. Uh, I've started uh, a different uh, ebook uh, for marketing back in 2016 called Brands Whispering, uh, and it was basically the same idea writing the scripts as a lecturer, knowing that these cases, these video cases, will be used in a classroom environment, get, getting the companies on board so that they will take part in this. Uh, and um, after reading the script that I have written for marketing, that they would executives, marketing executives would come and talk about the problem that they face in the marketplace and how they solved it. So this was the product idea and it started, as I said, I started working in 2014 and then the product was launched in 2016 under the name of Brands Whispering. At the moment, we've got 11 video cases that are uh, being distributed by the case centers. Uh, I mean, I'll give the link if you want at a later stage. As you probably know, as lecturers, you're entitled to have a preview of these, uh, anything uh, in the case centers collection, uh, free of charge. If your university is, uh, is uh, one of the subscribers of the case center, which most universities are. And as you probably know, if you want to use these cases, then you pay a, a, a fee uh, per student in order to be able to use it in the classroom. That's, that's how it is. But if, uh, to answer, Philip's question about the business model, how I got companies uh, agree to, uh, to, to pay for it, uh, was because we did not get a fund and we needed to find some way of financing this project. And uh, for companies, this is very attractive because as we all know, students of today do not want to see any ads. They're actually skipping ads when they are you know, faced at YouTube or wherever, uh, wherever, wherever. So the whole idea was to get to uh, convince companies to, uh, to come on board, saying that this will be a very good content marketing in order to be able to reach the students. Uh, which is true because, uh, I, I mean, uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, in, in all the cases that I have written, uh, I had 100% control and uh, companies did not really dictate what is to be written and what is not to be written. Uh, of course, there was mutual consent, uh, but, you know, it was very matter of fact. It was like first they were talking about a, a serious problem that they faced in the marketplace and how they solved it. They were very, very open. I think that is one of the crucial things in writing a good case, a video case, any sort of case. If they're open about their problems, then it gets the attention of the students and it makes the case a very interesting one. Otherwise, if it's all roses, then nobody is interested in, in learning about all those success stories. We hear so much, so many different success stories anyway. But if they hear a problem, uh, then you get the attention of the students. Uh, therefore, uh, companies were convinced saying that they would be talking about a real life situation showing what has been happening in their kitchen. Uh, and uh, this is something that they would not be able to do in an advertising because it, these were genuine stories. Uh, they got the attention of students. Uh, and hence, it was, as I said, very good content marketing in order to be able to 
younger generation. Uh, I still have this model, which has been uh, our uh, series, uh, marketing series has been uh, expanding and we're still working on it, as well as uh, me taking part at Multinationals Whispering uh, Project, bringing in the previous uh, technical know-how so that you know the Multinationals Whispering Project would be able to uh, end within a short period of time and would be building upon the knowledge that we already had via Brands Whispering. I guess that's all uh, very uh, quickly. If you've got any questions, um, I'll be happy to answer either here or maybe later. I don't want to crush on Philip and Andrea's session. Okay. <laughs> you can always reach Perhaps me I, I just put see, my email address. I do see one question from Noelia um, in the chat. Um, Noelia, you joined later, so at all times you can speak uh, in this session, given that it's a workshop. Uh, but I can also answer your question. So her question is, how long uh, does it take to prepare and have a video case? Um, how long do you recommend the video case to be? The latter question we'll, we'll come back to in a minute when we talk about uh, how to use um, uh, the cases in, video, in, in teaching. Um, how long does it take to prepare? Well, to be honest, I think if you're uh, really uh, skillful at this, not that long. Um, um, in, in the, the first um, uh, script writing is difficult. You know, you don't have any experience, so it takes you a long time. Um, but I think that after you know writing now, uh, let, let's say four scripts, um, I could probably do it um, in a in a few days. It wouldn't take me all that long. Um, and then you know, videotaping it, um, supposedly that I could do it myself. Um, then also this could be done in a day. The editing, of course, is a little bit uh, difficult, given that you need to have skills. Um, so all in all, I think that it could be done uh, quite um, efficiently. Uh, but to be honest, um, the first time round, it does take much longer. Huh? I, can, I, I can attest to that. Um, I have spent more time on this than any paper I have ever written. Uh, so, um, but of course, it's also because it's a big European project. And, and of course, it, it's requiring more than just uh, you doing it on your own. Yes, uh, Jean-Christophe. Yeah, you have an idea of the unit cost. Uh, look at, I will refer to you uh, because um, for us it's very difficult. I, I see some budget there, but I don't know about costing. Uh, perhaps Nuket can explain a little bit uh, how her model works. Hey, Jean Christophe, what did you mean by unit cost? Unit cost to the company? No, no for know. those who who who, who produce, uh, build, make, and uh, you know, register, the, record the videos. Yeah, right. Uh, the production costs are not that. I mean, I wouldn't say that the main costs are production costs. Uh, yes, there are a few things. One is production costs, like you said, post, uh, production as well as post-production costs are involved. But also there is your time as the copyright. Time spent, yes. Yeah. Uh, time spent. Um, and basically those are the two main, but I would say that copywriting costs would be more than uh, production and uh, post-production costs, depending, I guess, uh, I mean, in whichever country you're doing this. Mm. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and for just to give you an idea, for example, in the UK, if you want to this, do this in, uh, for production as well as post-production, it would cost you around 3000 uh, pounds. Uh, just okay. a rough idea. <laughs> Okay. Of course, you know, it just changes if you are, if you have the crew sent to a different location. This is resource, yeah. But I mean, roughly speaking, uh, 3,000 pounds would cover a video case for 20 minutes during the production as well as post-production. Yeah. So it's not excessive, right? I mean, uh, yeah. um, people always, well, of course, it depends a little bit on your model and, and how much uh, uh, bells and whistles that you want. But, you know, uh, given that Nuket's uh, uh, products are, are quite uh, uh, high quality, you know, so it's not excessive. It's, it's not uh, over the moon uh, type expensive, I think. And also just one more thing. It just depends on what sort of, I mean, in our model, for example, we include other things uh, to clients. For example, we give social media support uh, to each and every case that we produce. Uh, we also, you know, use them uh, or take them to different uh, marketing events uh, so that they can actually deliver these video cases on stage live to students. So we actually uh, mix them with various student activities at universities. I mean, again, it depends from one country to other. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, so I, I mean, the, the package might differ, uh, but this is what it is. Yeah, and then of course you have, um, uh, our cases will be uh, freely available given that it's a European project. 
uh, new CATS cases are available from the case center. So they are typically, uh, you know, the, 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 the case uh, based pricing that, that we, I think we all uh, know of. Okay, um, I suggest we move forward because I see that it's uh, 1034. Uh, we still have one more section to go. Um, I hope um, this is about, um, so share computer sound, yes, share. Uh, 